Hello students, this is the vocabulary video of the Book of Revelation class, uh, lesson 11. The title is Revelation 13 and the true identification of 666. Uh, we will start with a prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come to you asking for your wisdom and guidance as we study this subject of Revelation 13, the beast, and the number, and the mark of the beast. Help us and guide us by the Holy Spirit to know the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first one we want to look at is Herman Widerbos. He was a Dutch theologian and biblical scholar. He was an important New Testament theologian, having worked extensively on the history of salvation and biblical theology. In 1943, Witherbos was appointed to the post of Professor of New Testament Studies at Kampen, and he served there for over 40 years, a Dutch theologian. Donation of Constantine. In Latin, it's Donatio Constantini, is a forged Roman imperial decree by which the 4th century Emperor Constantine the Great supposedly transferred authority over Rome and the western part of the Roman Empire to the Pope. Composed probably in the 8th century, it was used in support of claims of political authority by the papacy. So this document has been used by the papacy. This document contains the papal title of Vicarius Filidei. Very interesting. This is the picture, I believe, sitting one is Constantine and he is giving out a document to a pope, the head of the Roman Church. Called. This is the picture describing uh, the donation of Constantine. Fallible, capable of making mistakes or being erroneous. If you say that someone or something is fallible, you mean that they are not perfect and are likely to make mistakes or to fail in what they are doing. Papacy has claimed that the Pope is infallible. So, fallible is the opposite way. Andreas Helvig, uh, in this time, 1572 to 1643, was a German classical scholar and linguist. Helwig was rector of the University of Berlin from 1611 to 1614, then professor of poetry from 1614 to 1616. Subsequently, he taught at the gymnasium at Stralsund. In his period at Berlin, he published Antichristus Romanus, an anti-papal work including the numerical formula identifying Vicarius Filidei, an alleged title of the Pope, reduced to its Roman numerals and summed to 666. It's a very interesting aspect. Uh, the one who applied uh, the number of the beast, 666, to Vicarius Filidei, uh, first, is not a Millerite nor an Adventist. It was Andreas Helwig in the uh, uh, 17th century at that time. Okay, you need to remember this. Leroy Froome was a Seventh-day Adventist minister and historian whose writings and interpretations are a cause of much debate in the Adventist Church. He also was a central figure in the meetings with evangelicals that led to the producing of the theological book 
questions on doctrine, which easily qualifies as the most divisive book in Seventh-day Adventist history. As a historian, he authored the prophetic faith of our fathers and movement of destiny. I remember, I think you know this name, Froome, and he wrote Movement of Destiny and the Prophetic Face of Our Fathers. And it, these are massive works uh, done by him as a historian. So he was very well known as, a, as an Adventist historian. But uh, somehow he was also the one who produced Christians and Doctrine, uh, which became the most divisive book in our church history because of a slight alter that they made about the uh, human nature of Christ and those things. And this, um, this information is even in Wikipedia. You can search it there. And I think the important thing about the human nature of Christ is the same nature that we hold, uh, that Christ took, is that um, he really uh, lowered himself all the way to save us, uh, and he identified himself uh, with us to redeem us and save us. I'm very, very thankful to him when I think about that. J. Moltmann is a German Reformed theologian who is Professor Emeritus of Systematic Theology at the University of Tübingen and is known for his books such as The Theology of Hope, The Crucified God, God in Creation, and other contributions to systematic theology. Moltmann developed a form of liberation theology predicated on the view that God suffers with humanity while also promising humanity a better future through the hope of the resurrection. Uh, he, he, is, he has the existential uh, understanding about the Bible. Gematria, it came from a Hebrew word, Gematria is the practice of assigning a numerical value to a name, word, or phrase according to an alpha numerical cipher. Similar systems have been used in other languages and cultures like the Greeks, Arabic, and English gematria also exist. Here is the one. This is Hebrew gematria assigning numeral number value to a Hebrew alphabet and this is Greek uh, gematria uh, alphabetical and he, this is the numerical number so the, the letter represents number that is gematria and this is English gematria showing here Roman numeral Roman numerals are the symbols used in a system of numerical notation based on the ancient Roman system. The symbols are 1, I mean I, V, X, L, C, D, and N, standing respectively for 1, 5, 10, 50, 100, 500, and 1000. Uh, you can see it in the next picture. Here, I is one, I, I think you know this system. Some clocks have the Roman number rather than uh, Arabic number. Uh, three, four, five, six. And if you subtract one from five is four. If you add one over five is six, seven, eight. And this is X is ten. And 2x is 20, and 50 is L, and 100 is C, century, you remember century, 
and then 500 is D and M is 1000 like millennium you notice the M there so this is the Roman numeral Roman numerals and their values numerical values interesting Edwin de Kock a theology graduate of Helderberg College in 1950. He is an American teacher and professor of South African descent and one of the most important living Esperanto poets. In addition to being a poet, he emerged as a biographer, Esperantologist, polyglot, editor and writer. He is an Adventist lay preacher, missionary, theologian, and vegetarian diet advocate. He authored The Use and Abuse of Prophecy, and the other work is The Truth About 666. Uh, he is currently staying in Texas. The Truth About 666 is his um, representative work that he spent for a long time to kind of verify that um, the title Vicarious Philly Day is really historical and it is uh, for the correct understanding and interpretation of the number 666 appearing in Revelation 13. So he is the work, he is the one who worked so hard producing like more than 800 pages of book uh, only dealing with uh, this subject of 666. Here is he and then the book title is The Truth About 666 by him. By the way, I will put this work, The Truth About 666, also in your uh, lecture material. Uh, in the e-class so that you can freely use of this PDF. Okay, Kenneth Jergensen. Kenneth Jergensen, a Norwegian, is a truth-seeking preacher and in his preaching he focuses on the prophecies of the Bible and the three angels' messages in Revelation 14. As any other faithful Seventh day Adventist speakers are doing. He pointed out in a paper read in 2006 during a ministerial retreat at Camp Campasovo, Michigan, that in Greek some manuscripts abbreviated the number of 666 in Revelation 1318 to Chi. Xi Sigma. Otherwise, it is written out in full, like in full, like hexacosi <laughs> Yeah, what is it? Let me read um, from the Bible, Revelation 13. Just a minute, Revelation 13, 18. Uh, hexakosioi hexekonta hex hexakosioi hexekonta hex usually this is uh, the verse is written in full for this number or if it is abbreviated it's chi xi sigma chi stands for 600 in uh, Greek numero and xi stands for 60 and sigma stands for 6 and it is never sigma 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 like we are doing in modern days with arabic number triple six it's not triple six therefore it is 666 as we see in the uh, greek bible Magnus Opus, from Latin Magnum Opus, meaning great work. A great or important work of literature, music, or art, a masterpiece. 
the best, most popular, or most renowned achievement of an author or artist representing their major life effort. Uh, the truth about 666 by Edwin de Kock is his magnus opus. Uh, yeah. <coughs> now we come to first beast in Revelation 13. The first beast is the sea beast. The first beast comes out of the sea and is given authority and power by the dragon. His appearance is described in detail in Revelation 13, 1 to 10, and some of the mystery behind his appearance is revealed in Revelation 17. In the historicist interpretation of the text, it is identified as the papacy. Here is the picture of the description in Revelation 13, the first beast with uh, seven heads, but it, it's the head of the lion, and then the body is the body of leopard, and the feet are the feet of uh, the bear, and altogether it is a strange uh, beast, and it's a composite beast of Daniel 7, those four beasts out of the sea. Uh, now are composed, are compositely becoming the first beast in Revelation 13. And it also has 10 horns here, as you can see. Second beast is in contrast to the first beast from the earth. So it's an earth beast. The second beast comes out of the earth and directs all peoples of the earth to worship the first beast. The second beast is associated with Revelation 13 verses 11 to 18, the false prophet of the Protestantism. The USA has been prominent with its Protestant Christianity. So the second beast, the identity of the second beast is the, the USA with its Protestantism. Right? It's called the Daughters of the, of the papacy, the harlot. The two beasts are aligned with the dragon in opposition to God. They persecute the saints and those who do not worship the image of the first beast. So uh, the second beast will set up an image for the first beast and will force, force the whole humanity to worship the first beast or the image of the first beast. And then it, the Bible warns, do not uh, worship the beast, nor receive his mark. Right? The, do not receive the mark of the beast, do not worship the beast. And then to identify who is the beast, it gives the number of the beast. Charman, Charmane this century was king of the Franks from 768, king of the Lombards from 774, and the first Holy Roman Emperor from 800. So he, he established the Holy Roman Empire. Charlemagne succeeded in uniting the majority of Western and Central Europe and was the first recognized emperor to rule from Western Europe since the fall of the Western Roman Empire around three centuries earlier, that was 476 AD, right? Um, and then Roman Empire fell and after about 300 years, now the Holy Roman Empire came through him. Yes. The expanded Fra Frankish state that Charlemagne founded was known as the Carolingian Empire. That's another name, right? Apologist. An apologist is a person who writes or speaks in defense of a belief, a cause, or a person's life. 
any of the Christian writers, primarily in the second century, who attempted to provide a defense of Christianity and criticisms of paganism and other aspects of Greco-Roman culture. Many of their writings were addressed to Roman emperors, and it is probably that the writings were actually sent to government secretaries who were in power to accept or reject them. So there were apologists in the second century, and also if you are a defender of a belief or a cause or some or a person, then you are called apologist. Tafianae, the Vicarious Filii Dei title used by popes is not a myth. In official papal decrees, Vicarious Filii Dei was used twice by Pope Paul VI in documents found on the Vatican's website. These are apostolic constitutions which are the highest form of official papal decree in the Roman Catholic Church and are issued with binding legal authority. So in a apostolic constitution, which is a official, an official papal decree, you see uh, this title being used by Pope Paul VI in 1968. Uh, the document is called Paphianae, generally in 1968, decree of Paul VI elevating the prefecture apostolic of Paphia, Cameroon, to a diocese. diocese. Uh, prefecture apostolic means a region, the name of the Catholic region, right? And Paphia was elevated from prefecture apostolic to a bigger re regional name, diocese. And in this document, doing this, uh, Paul, Paul VI used the title Vicarious Filii Dei two times. Very recent, right? In 1968. Meter, uh, it has two spellings, right? Is a type of headgear now known as the traditional ceremonial headdress of bishops and certain abbots in traditional Christianity. Meters are worn in the Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodox Church, Oriental Orthodox Churches, the Anglican Communion, some Lutheran churches for important ceremonies. It has a shape of fish. Interesting, right? This is the meter, and Pope also wears this meter, right? And sometimes on this meter, the title, papal title is there, like Vicarius Christi. And sometimes they say Vicarius Fili Day was there too. Yeah, you know, look at it in the class time. W. Pennenberg, Wolfhard Pennenberg, was a German Lutheran theologian. He made a number of significant contributions to modern theology, including his concept of history as a form of revelation centered on the resurrection of Christ which has been widely debated in both Protestant and Catholic theology, as well as by non-Christian thinkers, too. And um, he uh, was opposing the homosexuality, and one time he also visited Angelus Seminary, too, as a speaker there, and I remember that day, very well-known theologian, uh, but of course different from our faith. Number of the beast. The number of the beast is associated with the best beast of Revelation, which is in Revelation 13, 15 to 18. In most manuscripts of the New Testament and in English translations of the Bible, the number of the beast is 666 or Chi, Xi, Sigma, which is, as I said, in Greek numerals, 
chi represents 600, xi represents 60, and sigma represents 6. Revelation is admonishing to count the number of the beast. That's why we count the number of the beast or the number of his name. Uh, name means title, right? So that's why Adventists uh, apply this number. Adventists apply this number to the paper title, and we count the number, right? By gematria, this number has been applied to the paper title of Vicarious Philidae, the numeral sum of which reaches 666. So number of the beast, and now we come to the mark of the beast. Seventh-day Adventists, taking historicist view, believe that the mark of the beast refers to a future, universal, legally enforced Sunday sacredness. Those who reject God's memorial of creatorship, the biblical Bible Sabbath, choosing to worship and honor Sunday, in the full knowledge that it is not God's appointed day of worship, will receive the mark of the beast. That is in our Seventh-day Adventist belief, that means the 28 fundamental beliefs. The Sunday Sabbath is purely a child of the papacy. It is the mark of the beast. That is in Advent Review, written in 1850. It is very clearly saying here, Sunday observance is the mark of the beast. Very interesting, right? Um, that's how uh, our pioneers have believed. Here is the seal of God and the mark of the beast compared. Seal of God is the Sabbath of the Lord because it has the name and title and territory. Name is the Lord God. Title is the Creator. And uh, the territory is heaven and earth. The Lord meaning Jehovah God, right? And Sunday is the apostate church's mark of power, and it is the 666. Uh, the mark of the beast must be some human institution which stands in direct opposition to the seal of God. The apostate church has torn the true Sabbath out of God's law substituted Sunday, a festival borrowed from paganism, and now points to this bold action as the mark of her power. Yeah. So it's contrasting with the seal of God. Okay. Thank you so much for listening carefully to the vocabulary video, and um, enjoy your Sabbath. Uh, and we will see you on Sunday morning at 9.30 online. Thank you so much.